Jag vill välkomna er till Samantha och Eriks Prolop. Vi är här idag för att fira det resendlösa Charlek. For those who didn't understand me in either English or Swedish, uh, that means hello everyone. I'd like to welcome you all to Sam and Eric's wedding. We're gathered here today to celebrate their endless love. On behalf of Eric Anderson and Samantha Singh, I extend a warm thank you to all of you for joining us here in this beautiful garden. Now we'll have the ceremony right now and afterwards we're going to be going up to the top of the garden for a beautiful little glass of champagne. Uh, so follow the directions of all of the very handsome groomsmen here uh, and uh, we'll be on our merry way for the day. But as I look around this beautiful garden, I'm astounded by the beauty of this place. But I'm sure that I speak for everyone when I say what captivates our hearts most is the love that is present between these two incredible individuals. For those of you who don't know who I am, 
I am not, in fact, a Swedish minister, but I have had the pleasure of being friends with both the bride and the groom. I also had the pleasure of being there with Eric the night that he met Samantha. Or rather, I should say, I was supposed to be with Eric, because while the Hendrix team and I were sitting at the table at the restaurant in New York City, Eric was talking to Sam. Uh, it's actually a really great sign of where your priorities lie, so I appreciate you, Eric. <laughs> Sam, our gazes only met briefly that first night across a room, and I couldn't be more honored to be standing beside you both today to celebrate the love that has blossomed between you both. Over the years, I got to know you better, uh, from your interior design skills shining when I called you for these long conversations while I was walking around furniture stores trying to find the perfect couch, to our escapades in Napa and uh, California wine country. And then, when I needed advice and a shoulder to cry on, you were there for me. And while those interior design skills, I'm sure, are going to be important in the future, I know that it is your kind heart that will be the foundation as you continue to build a life with Eric. Eric, nearly six years ago, I was sitting on a bench in San Antonio, Texas, when up I looked and up comes this dashing, dapper Swedish gentleman. And I said, you must be Eric. And he looked and replied, ah, Mr. Horseman, I presume. <laughs> I love that day when I think about it because I didn't just gain a colleague, because I have the privilege of standing up next to a man I call my brother. And since I've known you, you've been my rock, you've been a confidant, uh, you've been a source of inspiration, not only in our professional lives, but in the way that I live day to day. I mean, clearly my fashion sense, uh, but also in love. Because I know when I look at you, I will strive every day of my life to find someone that makes me smile as much as you do when you think of Sam. Sam, I know I'm not supposed to tell stories from the bachelor party, especially up here, but there was this moment where I was looking at Eric and taking a picture of him, and I asked him to smile, and he gave his traditional Eric pose. And when he did that, it was... <laughs> it was beautiful, but I said, think of Sam, and when I look at that picture, it truly i feel like he's glowing in it so i just wanted to share that with you because truly he lights up a room when he thinks of you and you light up the room clearly in every day the more i think about how you guys met and the story that the stories you guys tell me over the years the more i think it's actually kind of like a traditional disney fairy tale except there are a few subtle differences um you see to me everyone their fairy tale meeting goes a little something like this. Once upon a time in a galaxy very, very, very far away lived a ruthless race of beings known as space ball, space balls. Oh. oh, sorry, this must be, that's the wrong one, sorry. All right, um, once upon a time in a restaurant in New York City, the princess and the pea, no noir, sat at the bar and along came a Swedish prince. There he saw her, sitting there across the bar. She don't got a lot to say, but there's something about her. And he don't know why, but he's dying to try. He wanna kiss the girl, but not yet, because we're not at that part of the speech. So, uh, and she thought that he was quite the catch. Their conversation seemed to paint with all the colors of the wind, and as the prince was soaring, tumbling, freewheeling through the endless diamonds in her eyes, the clock struck midnight, and he looked at his pocket watch and bounded off like a white rabbit to his colleagues, whom he had understandably forgotten about for the whole evening. And then the princess went back to her family and her wine. But before the evening was over, the prince tried to give the princess his business card. And, in possibly the most Mulan move ever, she said, no. And she said, you call me, and had the waiter deliver her business card to him. Mm -hmm. 
A meeting was then arranged for the grandest of central stations, but alas, when the prince arrived, he discovered that the princess had another potential suitor. And after an epic duel of wits, that the likes of which haven't been seen since Hercules fought the Hydra, the prince swept her and rode around the city on a horse called Uber. <laughs> they went to the best sushi spots where he decided to sashimi a little closer. And then by the end of the evening, he sent her off on a magic carpet ride home to the queen's palace. They parted ways, the spark had been created. Alas, as fairy tales often do, things took an unexpected turn. You see, this prince has a knack of falling asleep anywhere. But on this fateful day, he was put into a deep sleep by some unknown magic, and the princess didn't hear from him after she left the city. Nearly a year later, as the princess made a deal and traded her West Coast mermaid's tail for some full-time New York legs, the prince woke up. For you see, he had fallen so deeply in love that his heart had frozen to stone until he felt the warmth of the princess again. What started as a spark then fanned into a flame. However, the threat of the beast called COVID kept the princess locked in her tower, so she joined in various potion classes the prince was teaching on the Zoomoscope, and he attended a virtual birthday party of hers as a mysterious guest. Then, when they finally got a test, the princess lost one of her glass Jimmy Chews, which, re which resulted in her spending another 48 hours in her tower solely alone. But the prince refused, to her, refused her to lose her Jimmy Chews, climbed back on Uber, and rode the 48 hours toward the tallest tower in the land, where after cooking dinner and mixing up martinis, the princess lowered down her long and beautiful hair. He clambered up and poured the martinis into some now chipped teacups. As he offered the chipped teacup to Sam, or Princess Guyana, um, he said, I'm sorry, it has a chip in it. To which she replied, we're all flawed in some way. Sometimes the best book has the dustiest cover, and sometimes the best teacup has a chip in it. Prince Eric of Uppsala never left Princess Samantha of Guyana's apartment after that night. And it was crystal clear that they were in a whole new world full of love, laughter, and happily ever after. Oh, wait. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Well, now that you know that I like words, um, you know, I, I'm astounded about looking at love and literature. But there are few who quite grasp the depth, the complexity, and the magic of love as William Shakespeare. With that in mind, allow me please to present Maria for the first reading. Let me not to the marriage of true minds admit impediments. Love is not love which alters when alteration finds, or bends when the remover to remove. Oh no, it is an ever fixed mark that looks on tempest and is never shaken. It is a star to every wandering bark, whose worth unknown, although his height be taken. Love's not time's fool, Though rosy lips and cheeks with his bending sickle's compass come, love alters not with his brief hours and weeks, but bears it out even to the edge of doom. If this be error and upon me prove, I never writ, nor no man ever loved. <laughs> Thank you, Maria. When we look at the literary greats, they often leave a legacy of emotion that is felt by every person who turns the pages of their art. For example, I believe that Jane Austen's emotional legacy brings people together even still. And as I stand here, witness to the love that you two share, I see the same magic in bringing people together. 
Sam, when I heard that your favorite author was Jane Austen, while I was back in the UK last week, I actually went to her house and I was sitting in the garden and I was just thinking about what I wanted to say while I was up here. And I started writing this speech there. And I was flicking through this beautifully old antique version of Pride and Prejudice that I have as a wedding gift for you today. And as the words transcended centuries from her little writing desk in the living room to my heart, I realized that the true piece of art comes not from what's on the next page, but from the emotion that it's brought out by reading the words as you read it. So when we look at the book that is being written every day in our lives as we walk through this world, we see that joy doesn't come from what's on the pages of tomorrow. It's all around, in the moments, big and small, that we experience every day. And as we experience those beautiful moments, like meeting in a restaurant in New York City, over time, if we're open to it, they can become some of the most beautiful lights in our lives. Now there's definitely an extra special amount of magic here in the garden today, uh, with all of the friends and family that have gathered here to celebrate your love from all over the world. And if I could share a message for today, it would be an invite for us all to enjoy it. Let's share in loads of laughs and revel in the magic of the moments as we celebrate these two amazing people and families coming together. And speaking of messages, I'd like to invite Helene to share a reading. Today, my best friend has taken an important step in life. She has chosen to move forward as a special man's wife. I have grown to trust that he will protect her. He will honor and love and adore and respect her. To the bride, you should know that I admire you. You have such pride and passion in all that you do. I value our friendship and love who you are. You being you will take you so far. To the groom, you should know that I have given you my trust, that to love and protect our girl, you will do what you must. I know that you are a kind man with whom my sweet sister will go through life hand in hand. May your marriage fulfill you both in every way. May you grow to love each other more every day. May you prosper in health and happiness. May your dreams come true. You deserve nothing less. Thank you so much, Elaine. That was great. Now, in traditional wedding ceremonies, this would probably be the time where you would hear them say, in sickness and in health and for richer, for poorer, and so on. But they say that for good reason. And I'd like to highlight that, but in a slightly different lens today. They say this because the sun won't always shine in our life, nor will it shine always in our marriages. Nor should it. Because what sort of story would that be? It's not fun. If you go to the deserts of the world, where it's always sunny, they're harsh environments and barely anything grows. But the truth is, the rain is necessary for flowers to grow. And as Jane Austen once wisely said, we none of us expect to be in smooth waters all of our days. And as the adage says, a smooth sea never made a skilled sailor. Eric and Sam, you both are bringing your own set of expertise, skills, and knowledge on board as you set sail together from here on out. And I have no doubt that by working together, you guys are going to be able to weather the toughest of storms. And should you ever find yourself lost at sea in the vessels of your own hearts and minds, I know that the other will be there like a guiding star in the night. I'd like to invite you now to share your vows with each other as you begin this phase of your journey. Sam, we're going to start with you. Okay. I'm 
short. <laughs> Perfect. Okay. Love. I once thought I knew the meaning of the simple four-letter word, but I was wrong. It took me 40 years for you, my dear Eric, to enter into my life to truly understand the meaning that goes beyond just saying it. A dear friend once told me to be brave. Today, I am taking this step with you wholeheartedly because you are the first person that truly showed me what it means to be loved. And in return, I will strive every day to make sure you feel loved, even in most moments of haste. Those four letter words on a page opened the door to what seemed like just a fairy tale. But I'm here living it with you, with endless possibilities. That feeling is truly magical. I want to also be oblivious with most things around me, but you have been my constant reinsurance I needed without realizing it. Our wedding day, this day, this exact moment with our friends and family, I might have thought it many, many times and never 100% sure I would be so privileged to experience a special once in a lifetime event. As a diehard rom-com fanatic, <laughs> wow. I am my own. <laughs> I feel like Cinderella. Get together. <laughs> I am not one for promises, per se. Just try my best to show up and act. Do as I say, and be supportive in all that I do, but also to all that you do and endeavor so. Here's my best. I will continue to have you do all the cooking. I will do the dishes. I would try camping at least once in hopes the Ritz Carlton is near. <laughs> I will certainly get my hands dirty with gardening, provided I have gloves. Can't ruin the nails. Sorry. I will embrace new adventures in hopes of avoiding a panic attack. <laughs> they say when you meet the right person, you are to spend forever with, you just know. In you, I found my true partner, a lover, a friend, so when I can just be me with, who supports me every way, anyway, someone to be silly with and spontaneous. Most importantly, you are my forever adventure partner who will continue to push me out of my comfort zone, even tipping my axle. And I look forward to many negotiations on the number of activities we can pack in one day. <laughs> I have learned to love many things about you, including your procrastination. LOL. <laughs> and I look forward to continuing to do so today, tomorrow, the next, the next. Thank you for loving me the way you do and showing me how to do so in return. Gog Askerdig. Samantha, sing, Anderson. My wonderful, lovely, bold, brave, smart, loving, amazing, gorgeous, sparkling, sparking, energized, determined, caring, loving, shoe-loving, wonderful <laughs> wife. Samantha, sing, Anderson. It lies in the name. Not only emergence of two cultures, but the emergence of two people, and that's us. You mean the world to me, and I want to explore the world with you. Not only the geogra uh, geographical uh, earth rock uh, we live on, but the spiritual world, the emotional world, and the world that we are creating together. We've traveled so much already, and I'm still discovering new wonderful sights of you, Samantha, and uh, the fact that you take these leaps with me, although I know you are stepping out of your comfort zone, um, I know you do them for us, 
and I love you so much for it. Samantha Singh Anderson. We are embarking, embarking on this journey together as strong individuals, but even stronger together. You are a brave woman, and that's one of the many, many reasons I love you so much. You make me a better person. You make me feel calm. You center me. You are an inspiration to me every single day. From the moment I make coffee with you in the morning until the night we fall asleep in each other's arms, now and forever. I love you, Samantha Singh Anderson. <laughs> you guys are beautiful. <laughs> Right. Anton, could you please provide the rings to the maid of honor and the best man? Thank you. Sam, I know you were a little worried about the weather. Uh, and that you might be a little cold. Well, it definitely worked out, but I wanted to share, as I feel like the role of standing up here is just a little wisdom that I've learned over the years. And if there's one thing I've learned over my time knowing Eric and much longer in life, it's that true warmth doesn't come from the weather. It comes from those that we hold close to us. And I know in this moment, looking at you two, that you will never, ever be cold and you will always, always be warm. Can we have the rings? Sam, do you promise to be a faithful taste tester for all of Eric's drinks, to listen to jazz on repeat, and wake him up at his stop when he falls asleep on public transportation? Someone have to get him off the bus. <laughs> now please repeat after me. I promise to love you. I promise to love you. To cherish you. To cherish you. To continue being your photographer and stylist. To continue to be a photographer and stylist. And to hold you in my heart always. And to hold you in my heart always. With this promise, please put this ring onto Eric's finger. Noted. <laughs> Don't take it off. <laughs> Thank you. Johan, may we have the ring for Eric? You didn't lose it. <laughs> Eric, do you promise to take Sam on new adventures, to push her boundaries, and to know when it's a hard pass? Do you promise to always go shoe shopping, to watch all the romantic comedies, and of course to be her Prince Charming? Yes, I do. <laughs> now please repeat after me. I promise to love you. I promise to love you. I promise to cherish you. I promise to cherish you. I promise to keep you warm when you are cold. I promise to keep you warm when you are cold. And to keep you in my heart for as long as we both shall live. And to keep you in my heart for as long as we both shall live. And with this promise that you just made, can you please place the ring upon Samantha's finger? <laughs> That's the one. <laughs> Well, by the power vested in me as a friend who is the witness of true love, I now pronounce you Mr. and Mrs. Anderson. You may kiss the bride.
Yeah. All right. <laughs> In one minute. You guess my name? Are you playing enough? Yeah. <laughs>